In the lab we study metabolism of T cells and we're interested in T cells because these cells are important for controlling infection as well as tumors and we became interested in understanding why cells would adopt a particular type of metabolism compared to another because we're really interested in how T cells function in the body. Ultimately we're very interested in how these cells are able to fight cancer or an infection and in order to understand that we realized in the most basic way we needed to be able to understand the type of metabolism they would adopt to either function or to proliferate or to survive. Um, so to do that we did it in the most simple way now just to see how cells would engage which type of metabolism, these T cells, for a particular need. To enforce the different types of metabolism, to either enforce aerobic glycolysis or oxidative phosphorylation, we cultured cells either in glucose or galactose. And one of the first things that struck us about that when we did that is, and it's very clear, you can see that the T cells that are cultured in glucose, the media turns this yellow color. And that's because the media acidifies when they use aerobic glycolysis. When cells engage oxidative phosphorylation, the media doesn't acidify and it stays this pinker color. So that was our first clue that, as we expected, these different culture conditions would enforce different types of metabolism. But what was surprising to us, and what you can see, is when you look down the microscope, both of these cells, in both conditions of the T cells, whether cultured in glucose or galactose, they both proliferate. And we're interested in that because in, in our bodies, there's a lot of times when T cells can, can persist or be present, but they may not be able to function properly. This is certainly true during chronic viral infections, like HIV, or uh, during cancer. And in particular, it's known that, that T cells can infiltrate tumors or, or cancers, but they lack ability to function. And what we feel like our study does is sort of shed light on this idea that it's quite possible that T cells, while they're in the body and in these certain disease states, may not be able to adopt the correct metabolism in order to do what they need to do. In other words, they need to function to produce these inflammatory compounds to kill the cancer. And we feel that now that we've identified this mechanism and why a T cell needs to adopt a certain metabolism, it's not just for proliferation or just for survival, that this could be a target for, for future studies. In other words, if we know now that the ability of a T cell um, or th th when a T cell lacks function, that that could be tied to their inability to adopt the correct metabolism, shed lights on a new area that could um, prove useful for designing new therapies against um, infection or, or cancer.